Welcome to With You Every Step, the solo travel podcast that explores, explains, and hopefully inspires you to travel the world by yourself. I'm your host, Michelle Lee. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you are. Right now, I am in Melbourne and I am going to be speaking with Heidi, who is in Chicago. And we are going to be talking about Africa today and where we met and what we did while we were in Africa. Yeah, hello. Welcome back. Thanks for having me back. Yeah, it's great. I'm excited to talk about Africa today and where we met and why you ended up in Africa. Can you you tell me, because I know, I remember when I first met you, you were kind of talking about how you were meant to be traveling with somebody, but you weren't, you were by yourself. How did that end up happening? Um, So initially a friend and I were planning a trip to Africa. We hadn't really set up any specifics. We were planning on going for a month or two to Africa. We wanted to do safaris and whatnot. And I'd purchased uh, a a backpack. I'd purchased um, travel clothes, taken all these steps to go. And then she uh, canceled on me. So I think she was scared. She didn't want to go. So then I just decided to go by myself because I really wanted to go and um, I couldn't find a reason not to go. And that was your first trip overseas? Yeah, it was my first trip out of the country. Yeah. Do you think it was people telling her that why are you going to Africa? You shouldn't be going. And that's what made her kind of pull out. Yeah, she's really, really close with her family too. So I think maybe... She was just scared about leaving them. My cat is meowing in the background. I'm so sorry. (laughs) (laughs) Well, Um, I have some really loud birds in the background here. So you might hear them come through. So if you hear a bird or a cat, don't stress. It's not in your place. It's ours. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Yeah. So uh, she's uh, she's close with her family. I think she was scared about leaving them. It, we were trying to go for a longer time. So I think just maybe the length of the trip was intimidating to her. The cost of the trip, I don't think she had the funds to go when I had um, saved up a lot of money to go. So I think there were a lot of factors involved. And I ended up being really upset with her. We're totally fine now. I was going to ask, do you still talk now? Yeah, we're we're still super close. I was in her wedding and everything. Okay. Um, but for a little while there, I was, I was really upset just because we had been planning it for so long and then she backed out pretty, I wouldn't, I don't know if last minute is the right word, but after I had like gone through all these steps. Yeah. So you've invested money already and then she's backed out. Yeah. It is frustrating. And for your first trip, you were hoping to do it with somebody because you hadn't traveled out of the country before. You weren't sure if you should go by yourself, but then you bit the bullet and you did it. I did. I You only live once, and Africa was my number one spot. I really wanted to go on a safari. I wanted to see gorillas, so I just did it. Yeah, I'm glad you did because that's where we met, and now we are mates. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm glad I did it too. Oh, well, how did you book? How did you find what you were going to do? So I have a friend who's done a lot of traveling. So I reached out to her because she had recently been in Africa and she said that it would be possible for me to just do it on my own. Like I could go to a hostel and make friends and just follow along with them. But that sounded really uh, intimidating to me just because I had never traveled out of the country before. I couldn't really picture myself doing that. So instead, she told me to look into um, overland tours. So I did. I researched a bunch of different overland tour companies and ended up with the one we went with, which was uh, on-the-go tours because they had the cheapest price with the best reviews. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, they did. And it was okay. I mean, I've been on tours, other tours that, Actually, I don't think it was the tour. I think it was the guide. I think our guide was just super, super chilled. And I think our guide didn't give us a huge amount of information, which is what I'm used to. The guide normally gives you lots of facts and figures where our guide didn't really do that. But he made sure our safety was was well looked after. 
Yeah, well, what was uh, kind of interesting is, so before you joined the trip, so I started out with 11 people on this overland bus, and I was traveling with them for about two weeks before you joined us, and then there were 11 more people, so then there was 22 people. So before there was 22 people, he was a lot more engaged. And then I don't know what happened. He was just overwhelmed by the amount of people or what. (laughs) But he wasn't as engaged. But yeah, so before you joined me, I went to go see the gorillas in Uganda. And then then you joined the group. Yeah, which we'll talk about that in a little bit because I did that too. So we'll, we'll compare our stories in a little bit. But we ended up meeting in Nairobi is where I flew in. And my story with Africa was it was a bucket list for me as well, but it wasn't really at the top of my list. South America was first and that was somewhere I needed to go next. But then my friend that I met on a cruise ship in the Caribbean who ended up saying, hey, I'm getting married in South Africa. She was from there. She said, I really want you to come to the wedding. And I went, oh, well, okay, I guess I'll just go to Africa then. So that's how my Africa trip ended up happening, going up to East Africa first, then going down to Joburg for the wedding and then coming home after that. So that's why I ended up being in Africa. And as I was booking through my travel agent, my travel agent had mentioned to me that she would love to go to Africa. And I said, oh, okay. And on the go, they actually had a two for one deal. And she said, oh, I'd love to go. And I was like, well, it's going to make it cheaper for me. Why don't you join? So she did. So my travel agent (laughs) ended up jumping on and coming on my trip with me just for the first part. So I ended up not being alone, but I didn't really know her very well. We just ended up sharing a tent together. That didn't go amazingly. It's not No. (laughs) We got got along very well, but it cut down my price. So I just had to suck it up. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) How long were you in Nairobi for before we left there? Um... Oh my gosh, I don't remember. I think maybe just the night, the night before we left. Okay. Oh yeah, so you did actually, you did get in quite late that night. I do remember now. We'd already been there. I'd been there a day or two already and that really cool hostel, Wildebeest, that was a really cool place. Did you like that place? I did, yeah. It was like glamping, yeah. Mm. It was cool, but I think you were still staying in tents, weren't you? Uh, yeah, well, we were in tents. When I first got there, I got to stay in one of the cabin tent things. But that night I stayed in a tent. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so we started in Nairobi. And then for me, I was still super excited. So this is the first time that I've just landed in Africa. We're going to go out. And then we were heading to the Serengeti. And you had already seen a whole bunch of wildlife already. So Mm -hmm. it probably wasn't as exciting for you. Do you feel like that with Serengeti? It was still really exciting, but we had seen, we went on a really amazing safari in the Masai Mara and we saw anything and everything you could want to see in Africa while we were there. So the Serengeti was still really cool and exciting, but yeah, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't as great as what we had seen in the, the Masai Mara. Because you saw the wildebeest migration, didn't you? Yeah, we did. And it was uh, it was amazing. It's one of the coolest things I've ever seen. So, I mean, after seeing something like that, anything's going to be a little lackluster. <laughs> I did. I mean, the Serengeti was still amazing. I still had an awesome time there, too. Yeah, so we end up going and then we break up into smaller groups and go out in jeeps. And they take you out into the wild in these jeeps. And it is so amazing to be able they stop as soon as they come near wildlife they stop the jeep and they pop the top and you stand up near the top and you can take photos over the top so you're not near the animals but I suppose a lion could still jump up couldn't they yeah they could but uh the lion seemed I mean all the animals just seemed really really used to people like they really didn't care at one point we passed a lion just laying in the road and she just didn't move. She just let the, the trucks drive by her. People were taking pictures like crazy because there's a lion right there. So the animals aren't bothered. They're just really used to people. I, I, I did find that they were really respectful of the animals. Yeah, yeah. They didn't uh, invade their territory at all. I mean, obviously, a lion 
on the side of the road. There's not a lot you can do. <laughs> You've got to drive pretty close to the lion. But yeah, they didn't get too close to the animals, which was nice. And everyone was very quiet. You don't really yeah. hear people talking. It's really quite a beautiful, oh, I don't know the words. I think it's something you have to see for yourself to be able to really feel how amazing it is that how quiet it goes and then you're able to look out and you just see a lion sitting there and you're just like, oh my gosh, this is the wild. We're not at a zoo. There's no glass between us right now. Yeah, it's, uh, it's uh, I mean, seeing an animal in the zoo and then seeing an animal in the wild is way different and everyone is very respectful. You're right. So the Serengeti was really beautiful, but I actually preferred the no. I can never say this word. The <laughs> Ngorongoran crater. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did I get that right? Ngorongoro. I mean, I have an American accent, so I'm sure we're both butchering it. But, um, <laughs> 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 but <laughs> yeah, I liked the crater, the crater a lot as well. Yeah. Um, so both... it, it's an old volcano, right? Uh, I think so. It's been a while, so I don't remember for sure. But yes, I think you're right. And you drive in from the top of the crater and as you're going in, you get this beautiful view of it and it is stunning. And yeah, so then you it's so go pretty. down in the crater and there's a lot of greenery where the Serengeti is quite dry looking. The crater is quite lush. Right. Mm -hmm. That's right. And there's... Um... I remember we ate lunch next to this big pond where there are just hippos milling about. So we're eating lunch just like feet away from hippos, which was really neat. Yeah, it was until the until an eagle took the top off my sweet potato. Oh no! Do you remember seeing that? I was sitting. I was just going. I just went and sat by myself to take it all in. And I, because I can't eat what they had prepared for lunch, they had given me a slab of, it was, the slab is the only way to explain it, of sweet potato. <laughs> it was this massive, massive chunk of sweet potato and it was quite raw. And I had opened it up and I was just about to eat it. And this massive hawk, I think it was, come flying down and everyone was watching it. No one warned me. And it flew right near my ear and it took the top off my sweet potato and then as I oh, I thought what was that it happened so quick and as I looked up there's this massive hawk with these wingspan of at least two to three meters it was huge and then the guide said to me you're lucky it didn't take your finger or your ear off <laughs> oh my gosh I mm. don't remember that because we were in different groups so were we I don't think we were together then I don't know. Were you not in our truck at that point? No, I wasn't. Oh, okay. That would be why then. Yeah. yeah. So we, yeah, we kind of got there at different times as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's why you would definitely remember that if you saw that, that was everybody. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, did anyone get that on your GoPro? And they're like, no, I was like, you saw that was going to happen and no one took film of that. <laughs> <laughs> that's oh. crazy. Yeah, so then I had no lunch, thanks to that hawk or eagle or whatever it was. It was huge. <laughs> oh, I'm glad it didn't eat my finger or my ear. Me too. And then we went We went to Arusha. So Arusha is the town where they had the snake park. And oh, we, and yes. And somebody had a birthday. Yes, me. <laughs> <laughs> you did. And I think it was Helen and I snuck up in the middle of the night and we put balloons all over your door. Yeah, because we, we were in tents the entire well trip, but you could upgrade and pay extra and stay in a room. And so my tent mate was this really cool lady named Jan. And she said, for your birthday, I'll pay for us to get a room. And so I said, okay. So we stayed in a room and you guys decorated my door with balloons. It was so sweet. And then our guide made you, or our chef made you a cake as well. He did. Yes, it was delicious. Yeah. I think the dynamics of that group were quite interesting because there were so many different personalities from people from all over the world. And it was really interesting to step back and see it in a psychological 
way of the personality conflict that they were going on. It was a battle of the sexes. It was a battle of um, top dog in a way. Yeah, well, there was a little bit of an issue before your group came on. And I initially had taken a side and then I was like, Heidi, what are you doing? Like, you came here to get along with everyone. You want to be friendly with everyone. So then I I made it very clear that I wanted to remain neutral. <laughs> mm. and, um, um, yeah, I mean, you know, when there's when you're in close quarters with people you wouldn't usually spend a bunch of time with, I think that's kind of a recipe for conflict sometimes. But I really tried to stay out of it. And I think that's the best thing to do is to kind of step back and just not because otherwise it just ruins your time. And I really had to do that with the girl that I was traveling with because she was so negative and she was so she looked like she was having a miserable time. Constantly. Yeah, she did. <laughs> she Constantly. Did. <laughs> and so I didn't want to really have her drag me down. So I had to spend all my energy to not buy into her negativity to be able to just go, hey, this is amazing. I'm in Africa seeing wild animals. I can't be in in her depression. I can't be sucked into that. Yeah, yeah. It definitely is something you've got to make a, make a conscious effort to do because uh, going negative is always the easier way to go. So I also had to work really hard to stay positive and not get involved in the drama. Mm. It's interesting though, isn't it? That negative is always the easiest thing to get sucked into. Why isn't it the other way around? It's, it's the way of the world. Yeah, I don't know. I guess just like gossiping and talking about other people is just a really easy trap to fall into. Mm. Especially for women. I don't know how much men do it, but I know women, it's definitely a flaw that I think us women have. And that's something that we do. But yeah, I think the older you get, the more you realize that that's not the way to be. And we're going to lift each other up and not put each other down. Yeah. Well, you know, we could get into the way society pins women against each other, but we don't need to do that right now. But um, <laughs> yeah, you know, being a, you got to be a feminist and support other women. So moving on. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, so we were in Arusha, then we drove to another campground, and then we ended up in Tanzania. Mm, isn't Tanzania where Serengeti is? Oh, yes, you're right. Yeah. So this whole time we were in Tanzania, I was thinking about um, how we ended up like by the beach. Yeah. So that is Dar es Salaam. Yes, yes, yes. Mm. So I remember they were quite worried in Dar es Salaam about our le us leaving the the property. Yeah. Um, there were a few campgrounds that we stayed at where they were like, don't leave. Um, the campgrounds were like, they had fences with barbed wire at the top. There were guards with guns guarding the area. So we were very lucky that everywhere we went, we were kept very, very safe. Yeah. I didn't have that same luxury in Uganda. After I left you guys, the tour I joined was not the safest they didn't put our safety first which was a real shame and they we did have an incident which I think I've spoken about on a previous podcast but yeah I, I do feel like they were a little bit more on top of it with making sure that you know don't leave here don't go too far because you could go on the beach but they were saying to us don't go past this section of the beach stay here and I ended up that night getting myself one of those it, it was kind of like a cabin but it was a little, like a little house, really, at that campground. It was beautiful. It was one of the best places I stayed at in Africa. It was so lovely. It was two stories, had a beautiful view. It was so nice, but it was a fair bit back, and I had to walk back at night by myself. But I felt safe within that location. Yeah. Yeah, I felt fine. I was in a tent. Yeah, I, I, I'm on these groups that you can join on Facebook, which is a really good idea for those that want to travel by yourself. I think it's a really good idea. I've just started up a With You Every Step community group as well. So you can go and you can join that group and that will then connect you with other travelers and then we can talk about things that maybe you hear on our podcast, ask us questions, totally happy to answer questions. So go join our group and you can do that. But I'm on these other groups as well and I hear women 
saying they want to go to Africa, but they're so scared. And then other people are saying to them, oh, yes, don't go to Africa. I think you've just got to be smart on how you do things. And I think you did the right thing by joining a tour. Do you think you would have been able to do it by yourself without joining a tour? I think I would have figured it out, but uh, especially the areas we were, it would have been really, really tough. So like doing the activities we were doing and the areas of Africa we were in, it's just completely foreign. It's totally different than America. So I think I would have been very, very overwhelmed. So I'm really glad I did the tour where everything's taken care of for you, how you're getting from point A to point B. You don't have to worry about anything. Yeah. So it is more expensive to do it that way, but uh, it was worth the money for me. I don't know if I was to go to a hostel in the parts that we went to, I don't know how then you would organize to get out onto a safari and trust the people that are sending you out there. So I think I would definitely recommend people to do a tour if you're wanting to do a safari. If you want to go to Zanzibar, do not do a tour. You don't need to. Zanzibar, you can go and chill out on the beach. You can go to Stone Town, totally safe. I did not feel like there was any issues in Zanzibar at all. Yeah, I liked Zanzibar a lot. It was paradise. It was paradise. I would go back to Zanzibar. So we started off in, so you have to get the ferry from Dar es Salaam over to Zanzibar and that ferry ride. Oh, that was intense, wasn't it? Do you remember getting on? We were like cattle. Yeah, it was a, it was an interesting method of doing it for sure. (laughs) And the ferry ride to Zanzibar was, the water was very calm, but I remember the ferry ride from um, Zanzibar back was so bumpy and everyone was getting sick around me. It was awful. Yeah, there's first class and second class. I think that's how they might do it. And first class is when you sit inside, second class is upstairs. And so we had first class and I don't know how because not everybody had it. So I'm not sure what they kind of did with that. I don't know if they were really keeping track of everyone that well. Yeah. And so we were okay inside and there is an airport on the island of Zanzibar. So I flew out from there, but there is also an airport at Dar es Salaam, correct? Is that where you flew out from? Yeah. So when I left Africa, I, um, I flew out of Dar es Salaam. So I flew out from the actual island of Zanzibar. So I didn't have to do that ferry ride back which I'm glad I didn't because from what I've heard, everybody that took it back was sick. I think, I don't know what it is. Maybe you're going against the current or something. I'm not sure. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, yeah. I don't know what it was. It was just super bumpy. I luckily didn't get sick, but if I stayed on there much longer, I would have been sick, but everyone was throwing up around you. It was, I just plugged my ears and just like took deep breaths and just trying to get through it. I am such a sympathy chucker as well as getting motion sick. I would have been the bomber. Terrible. Glad I ended up flying out of of Zanzibar. So Stone, Stone Town is a really beautiful little town. I would recommend it if you want to go somewhere. And even if you are living in Africa, go to Zanzibar if you can. It is so pretty. It's such a pretty little town. I loved Stone Town. Yeah, Stone Town was, uh, it was really, really cool. Cobblestone streets. They had a night market uh, where we got some dinner. I don't think you were with me for that. No, I don't think I was. I think, did you even stay at a different hotel than we did? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, because that part wasn't included in our tour. And so before we were, as we were getting closer to Dar es Salaam, our guide had said, Hey guys, these things aren't included. Where would you like to stay? Here are some selections. And so we chose from those selections and I think we chose a different hotel. And so we weren't together at that point. And then even no. in Nangui, but we ended up staying next to each other. Yes. Right. Yes. So Stone Town, we were different hotels. And then when we went to the beach we were also in different hotels but my hotel mate Jan flew home for me so then I ended up staying with our friend Helen her and her uh 
her friend made room for me, which was very, very nice. So there are three of us in this small hotel room. Then that's when we all became really good friends was uh, from that experience. Yeah, because then we ended up staying. I don't know. How many more days did you stay? Two or three, I think. Yeah. And in those two and three days, we went to the pub and we had some drinks and we danced and we had these really amazing things that happened. But getting back to Stonetown, I... I don't know if you went. Did you go to the slave market and see that? The uh, slave museum? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So it used to be the slave market and that's what they would call it. And right. Yeah. It was the last slave market in the world that was still running. And obviously you're American. I'm Australian. We have different history. This was more based on a history that you probably could relate to a lot more and probably have learnt about a lot more, maybe in school. Here in Australia, we haven't really heard about that very much. So for me, it was really quite shocking. Oh. Oh, it really was. It was so shocking because we we don't have that history in a way here. We've got our, our Indigenous people here and they were treated in a disgusting way here but it wasn't the same as that. And so going into a, an area where people were kept underground and put on a tree and whipped to see how long they can last and seeing if that would make them a good slave or not was so awful. I, I was in tears. It was something so foreign for me. I couldn't believe it. Yeah. Yeah, it's bad. Really bad. And so... There was that. There was something else that we did on that tour that I thought was really cool. Oh, that's right. I ended up going on another tour that I don't think you did where I went out to one of the farms. Oh, yeah. No, I did not do that. Yeah, so we went out to one of these farms and it's a fruit farm and they give you all of these different fruits to try and they make these hats out of the palms and it was such a cool experience a spice farm that's what it's called the spice farm so i recommend going and doing a spice tour in zanzibar in stonetown it was really cool i really enjoyed it they put on a bit of a song and dance and they make it fun and they give you lots of stuff to try and i really enjoyed that i thought that was a lot of fun so i recommend doing that and then we ended up going to the northern beaches which so we went to nungwi but we also did another tour where we went um, snorkeling and we got to see those tortoises. Oh, how did I forget that? <laughs> yes, that was one of the other best things that we did. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was really cool. We got to go um, see these tortoises and you got to get up close with the tortoises and you could feed them spinach. And um, we were with this one tortoise who just loved having its neck scratched. Yeah, it was so cute. We loved it. Yeah. Um, I remember arriving. And so we get on this boat and it takes us over and we arrive at this beach and it's only a small little beach and there's nobody else around. And I remember looking around going, wow, this is beautiful, but there's nobody here. And then you go up these steps and you kind of walk into, it looks like an abandoned hotel, doesn't it? It was, well, we were supposed to like tour this jail, but there really wasn't much to see. It was just this like old building. And then, yeah. And then there was this, I forget how we even got to the tortoises. It's just part of the, the island. Yeah. You just keep walking. And as we were walking through this abandoned looking hotel, of course, my mind goes into theater mode. And I was like, wow, there could be so many movies that you could make about this place right here, which I'm sure they've already done because you just look at it and you think, wow, anyone could be hiding anywhere and anything could happen to us right now. <laughs> and then you walk and you just keep following these signs. And again, there was nobody else around. It was just us. And we walk and then you get to this tortoise uh, sanctuary. And then there's people everywhere. <laughs> what? Where did yeah, all these people yeah. come from? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was really, really neat. Um, they had baby tortoises, tortoises that had been alive for like 70, 80 years. Mm, they had their number on their back of how old they were. Right, right. Yeah. And then we did go and do a little bit of this tour of this prison because actually it's called Prison Island and that's the name right. of it. 
and it was it was cool it was super cool but yeah there's not much of a prison there and i love dark tourism i love going to jails and prisons around the world that are museums and this was really not one (laughs) yeah yeah (laughs) a little lackluster yeah and then we went snorkeling so then we jumped back on the boat and then we only went so we thought we were jumping back on the boat and we were going to go somewhere really far and we literally went like what 20 meters in the water yeah we just yeah just went out a little ways and snorkeled around there and then yeah yeah got back in went back that's right i don't think personally that the that snorkeling was really that good there wasn't that much to see i didn't see very much i don't think the clarity was very good that day doesn't mean that other days it's not but that day it wasn't amazing yeah yeah i um i had a an amazing time. I never get to snorkel. So I was all about it. But um, but yeah, I've definitely done better snorkeling. Yeah, it was still good. I would still recommend it. I definitely recommend doing Prison Island. It's really awesome. Can't believe I nearly forgot about that. That was definitely a highlight there as well. Yeah, it was really cool. Then yes, then after that, we went up to Nungwe, the northern beaches. So yeah, we got this van. I don't think it was very expensive. I think between a bunch of us it ended up being not very much and so then you end up getting to the northern part which was maybe two hours yeah I don't remember I remember being in the van for a little while but it wasn't terribly long and then it gets quite bumpy as the closer you get to Nungwe yeah dirt roads yeah and we stayed we first stayed at the I think it's the Amman bungalows I think that's the name uh, I, I don't know. I was with Jan in our little hotel, which was pretty far from wherever you were staying. Oh, that's right. You ended up staying at a different place again. And yeah. then after Jan left, left, then you came and joined us. Right. Yeah. You were at Hotel Z and I was at, um, I think it was the somewhere. Amman bungalows. I think that's the name. Is that it? No. You stayed in like one of the fancier hotel yeah, I stayed there first though and then we transferred oh. over yeah so I'm not sure on the name I'll look it up and then I might put it down because it was a really good place it was a good price and it was good and it's next door to the Z hotel which I then transferred over to the Z hotel and stayed there which I had already previously booked because I was staying in a lot longer in Zanzibar between then going on to my next tour when I flew into Kampala in Uganda to do the gorilla trekking, which was one of the highlights of my life. Yeah, it was, it was amazing. It really was. You have to hike for hours and hours and hours because you are going out to find the gorillas because they're in the wild. So you're trekking through I mean, there's no trail. You're trekking through bushes and you're getting bit by these really big, nasty ants. And I didn't have that happen. And you guys had already warned me about that. So I made sure that I had pulled my socks over the top of my hiking pants. And I wore like four pairs of socks because you guys had warned me about these little bitey, bitey ants. But I didn't have that happen. So I don't know if they couldn't bite through my socks because you guys had warned me so well, or we just didn't end up stepping on them. I'm not sure. Yeah, they were like everywhere where we were. And I had done the socks over my pants thing, but I could still feel them. And they just, they were everywhere. Yeah, and you said they were climbing right up your legs, right? Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, they were, yeah, they were just everywhere. Um, Because your, we, our guide had a machete and he was taking us through the brush. So we were like really in the thick of the jungles of Africa. And then they find the gorillas and you look over and there's a giant gorilla feet away from you. It's amazing. It is amazing. I ended up hiring a porter. I had the luxury of having you guys do it already. So you had already given me a rundown on what to expect and told that, yes, get a porter. They'll help carry your bag 
and they will help you. And I got this beautiful woman and she was amazing. She just softly would grab my hand and she would help me down and help me up. And she carried all my stuff and then she would just stop and give me my water and she was worth it. And it's also a way of supporting the people that work there. So I was really happy about that. And I'm glad that I did get that tip. So I do recommend that if you're going to do it, Hire a porter, gives them a job, gives them something to do. They are amazing at what they do. And I had, and you know, having a conversation with her was really a nice part of the day too, to hear about her life and her kids and that she does this as an income, but she can't do it too often because it's so stressful on the body because it is hard work. Yeah. Yeah, it is. You're hiking for a very long time. And something that they do is that they don't put everybody in the same group. They kind of assess you on what they suspect your level of fitness to be. And so if they think you've got a, quite a fit looking physique, you're more than likely going to be put in a team of people that will go further out. So we had in our group, we had a group, a family that were 70 year olds, year old plus. And they ended up being in the close group. So they only had hiked for maybe an hour or two where we hiked for six hours. So there was a difference. What group were you in? Were you in the super fit group that made you go out further? Um, Well, I was with uh, some of the older people in our uh, tour group. So we actually were a part of the easier group and we still had to trek for quite a ways. I think we trekked for four hours or so. Yeah, because the gorillas are moving. They're in the wild. So even if they think that they might be close and they're going to put you in the closer group, they might keep going and the gorillas are moving. So you've got to kind of follow them. Yeah. And they only let a certain number of people go to each gorilla family and also a certain number of people just see the gorillas in general every day. And once you do reach the gorillas, you are only allowed to stay there for an hour. Yeah. For one hour. Because they don't want the gorillas getting too um, used to having people around. Mm, yeah. And did your silverback charge at all? Yeah, he charged at us twice and it was so scary. We saw his teeth and it was so loud. I thought it was going to die. And they tell you that when the silverback uh, charges at you, you're not supposed to run because if you run, he'll just chase you. So you're supposed to stand your ground. So I was standing there and there's a gorilla pounding his chest, screeching, baring his teeth at me. And all I wanted to do was run, but I just tried to stand there. It was so scary. But then at the end of it, you're like, that was super cool. Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> Isn't it amazing how those situations, you're so scared and at the end of it, you're like, yes, that was the best. <laughs> yeah, it was awesome. And our guides kept making gorilla noises to the gorillas that meant like we are friends. And it was something like it was like, ooh, ooh. and the silverback would make the noise back to them. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah, it was really cool. And we had a baby. Yeah, we had a baby. I don't, we didn't get a really good look. Ours kind of kept staying in the, in the bush quite a lot. So it was quite hard to see them. But at one point the baby came up and he grabbed someone's foot. (gasps) And so Silverback came charging out and stomped the ground right near us. And they had told us to look down if that happens. And so we all looked straight down and then he just went back into the bush but i had just stopped my gopro from filming just a second before that (laughs) happened otherwise i would have caught the whole thing i was like just keep it on so tip just keep it running the whole time you never know what's going to (laughs) happen yeah in that same vein though i would recommend getting a picture and then just enjoying it yes which is why i think i wish i just kept the video on and just had it holding it because you don't need to look through the GoPro anymore. Right. You can just hold uh, them gotcha. up. Yeah. And just watching it. And I wish I did that because, yeah, like you said, you take a photo and then you just got to take it in because otherwise you don't, you don't get to enjoy it. Yeah. You're just there for an hour. Yeah. Yeah. And they are constantly moving. Ours, were yours moving a lot? Ours were moving so much. Yeah. We had to keep sort of following them. At one point they were stationary for a little while, but yeah, we had to keep following them. Ours happened to be basically on 
the edge of the mountain. So you're not standing on ground. We were standing on vines and holding on to all these vines, trying to watch them, which was for me quite scary because I don't like being on the edge very much. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 We were, we were okay. We weren't um, on the edge at all. Mm, but there's so many different families. But then what I did learn is how endangered they are and how much they need to be preserved and how we really need to look after them. Yeah, yeah. There's very few mountain gorillas left. Yeah, which is really quite sad. And there's some really good foundations out there that are doing amazing work. Alan DeGeneres is doing an amazing, amazing work. I think she just went recently and did some gorilla hiking and went out and saw them in the wild too. She did. She went to uh, Rwanda. Mm. Yeah. So overall, was it one of your favorite trips that you've been on? Oh, by far. Yeah. It might, it might be my number one. I mean, the Amazon was amazing as well, but, um, but I really, really, I always wanted to go to Africa and it was the first place I went to out of the country. So it'll always kind of be high up there for me. Yeah. Do you have any other recommendations for people? wanting to head to Africa, maybe things that they should buy or take with them? Um, bug spray, lots of bug spray, and uh, just do your research and know what you're getting into. You definitely need hiking shoes if you're going to go to the gorillas. You definitely need hiking shoes. Something that I hadn't thought of, and again, I was lucky enough that you guys had given me one of the ladies from our tour group that was in your group that did it did it already, gave me some gloves. I didn't even think of taking gloves with me. Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. Did you yeah, have yeah, gloves? Yeah. I did. Yeah. Cause it was on the packing list. Oh, mine did not have a packing list and mine did not say to take gloves. So take gloves. You need them so much. They give you a stick and it's just a stick to be able to walk with. And if I didn't have that, I would have had blisters just from holding that stick, let alone grabbing onto all of the bush that you need to grab onto. Yeah, having gloves is a very good idea. Mm. And a raincoat is a good idea. It just kind of stops anything from penetrating through your clothes when you're hiking through that forest. Yeah, yeah. And uh, then the I'd say sunscreen for Zanzibar. Thank you so much for joining me again on With You Every Step and talking about our trip in Africa. But we had the same trip, but we had very different experiences, which is what I love about traveling. Yes, I agree. Yeah. Bye. Thanks for listening to With You Every Step, hosted by Michelle Lee. We do hope you enjoyed listening. And if you did, make sure you tell everybody. If you didn't, nobody likes a Debbie Downer. Please subscribe to get up to date with our latest releases and give us a thumbs up on our social media at With You Every Step. We love to hear from you. If you have any questions or inquiries, head to the Contact Us page at our website, michellelee.com. That's also where you'll find all our blogs mentioned in the podcast. We love to hear from you and if we have inspired you to travel. Thanks for listening. Love life and adventure on.